Welcome back to our conversation with Congressman Joe Kennedy. And Joe, you mentioned that you support the idea of term limits for Supreme Court justices. Justice Breyer has come out in favor of this. This would be an 18-year term staggered so that every two years another justice is up. Yep. Uh, the, the lawyers at SCOTUS blog, which is a well-regarded analytical website, did an analysis that showed that if we had been turning over a Supreme Court seat every two years over the last 30, 40 years, Roe versus Wade would have been overturned in 1987, reinstated in 2009, and overturned again in 2017. Do you really want to open the door to that kind of instability? John, so a couple of things on that. One, the, the system that we have at the moment has allowed the last two Republican presidents to confirm who lost the popular vote to confirm four conservative judges. Right? That's uh, there's a conservative majority on the court at the moment. That's the reality through which we view all current legislation that or all current cases that would go before the Supreme Court on judges that one could argue are are there off of potentially biased legitimacy. One, two. The fact is that. A number of those big pieces of legislation, particularly Roe v. Wade, I think if Mitch McConnell had thought that he could repeal it, he would repeal it. The, the issue isn't so much the composition of a court or the Senate, it's that this is a fundamental bedrock law and value per, throughout most of the country. I don't think he, even if he had the votes to do so, he would dare try to do so. You've got even a couple Republicans still in office today uh, that support Roe v. Wade. And so I, I don't think that the it ends up being the composition of the court. There's been a conservative majority on this court now for years, and they still haven't done it. So I think how I view this is you put forth the our country is based on a democracy and the idea of one person, one vote. You put forth these ideas before the American public. The public is supposed to get the government they vote for, and they're not. And I, I understand the whole argument about having a moderating pace for change. That those moderating forces at this point are being used to stagnate any sort of updating to our society that is creating a bigger and bigger rift between where the country wants to go and the government and the structures that we have. And that's the fissure that allowed Donald Trump to win in the first place, and that's what we have to change. I'm hearing a lot of concern from you and a low opinion of the state of the Republican Party in Washington, both in the White House and in the Congress. When you were first elected, mm -hmm. you placed a lot of emphasis on bipartisanship, and you've often, you, at least early on, you often talked about your efforts to build relationships with Republicans. But some of these proposals are pretty partisan. Is all that by the boards now? No, so no, not at all. Some of my closest friends in Congress are Republicans. I'm proud of my record. And I've gotten through, I think, as many bills in this time period under a Donald Trump presidency as I did in any time period under Obama. 100%. Our country needs more bipartisanship, not less. What I would argue is that the system that you've got at the moment perpetuates and incentivizes an extreme rather than actually the, the hard part bipartisan work that's necessary to generate that systemic change. And if you put the confidence in the American public to allow them to actually make these decisions, to empower their votes to actually matter the way that they should throughout our judicial, presidential, and uh, executive and legislative process, then yeah, you're going to encourage bipartisanship. You're going to encourage people reaching across the aisle. You're going to encourage legislation ideas that rep represent the vast majority of the American public not ones that cater to some extreme because of the electoral system is so biased off of because of the political structures around campaign finance reform, around gerrymandered districts, around the calcification of a system that empowers the few at the expense of the many. And that's what we have at the moment. I wish we had a lot more time. We don't. Our time is up. But we'll look forward to having you back again soon to talk about this, whether you're running for re-election of the House or for another office. Thank Thanks, you, Congressman. You're welcome. Congressman Joe Kennedy, that's all our time for this morning. Now, back over to my colleagues for much more WBZ News.